Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. So today's video is going to be a week long sleep train with me. Before I get started, I did just want to come on here and let you guys know that I understand sleep training a lot of times is associated with the cry it out method. And I just want you to come into this video with an open mind and an open heart. I am in no way trying to force anybody to sleep train their child. I just want to be able to provide an inside look of what it looks like. I am a first time sleep training mom, even though I have two children. This is my first time sleep training my child and this is what it looks like in real life form and fashion there will be some crying but I am in no way promoting the cry it out method or any specific sleep training method there are a ton of ways you can sleep train your child in this video I will be referencing the outlet dream lab system this is in no way a sponsored video but I do want to know a few things one when I was filming I did have to get permission because I was in their beta program so I basically tested out their system and reported back any types of bugs that you would see so it should be all fixed there was a team of us that were doing it so once it's released to the public which when this video goes live it should be so I will leave that in the description box below if you are curious it is a paid subscription but you get it for life and there is a ton of educational material on there including some videos so with that there are three methods that Owlet uses like I said there are a ton of other methods out there and you can definitely do some research out there I think what I saw there was like 12 different sleep training method but Owlet refers to three of them so they do refer to the stay method the touch method and the visit Visit method. If you hear me in the video say leave method, I'm actually referring to the visit method. I kept mixing it up, but it is known as the visit method. So I just wanted to clarify that before we even start the video. The Dream Labs outlet system does a really good job on making sure you are ready before you even begin. You do have to take a quiz, including your child's age, weight, and your sleeping habits. If your child is not at least 14 pounds, they are going to tell you to wait at least two weeks to come back and see if your child has met the weight requirement. I do recommend that you do not lie about your child's age if you want to start early just wait until your child hits at least 14 pounds or again until your pediatrician says that it is okay to start sleep training last disclaimer I may have already said this but I am in no way or fashion forcing sleep training onto anyone this video is very educational and it's just to give insight into what sleep training looks like so if you are someone who wants to sleep train you can be more prepared when going into this and I am not forcing any type of sleep training method onto you you can make your own decision when it comes to sleep training the dream labs outlet system can help you by giving you a quiz to see which one of the three methods would fit your family best but again they give you videos to overlook all three of the methods so you can see what it's going to look like and you have the ability to choose which method even if you scored higher on a different one so I hope you guys can go into this video with an open mind I hope it helps you out and let's just get started with the week long video diary Okay, so now we're going to put the baby into the crib at the exact designated bedtime on that master sleep. Day one, okay? Mommy is going to put you in your room. Yes, you can do this. I know you can. You're a big boy. You need to learn to put yourself to sleep, okay? Yes. So my sweet husband let me know there's spit up on my shirt. <laughs> Just right there, you know. If you wanna know how realistic this video is, um, let me turn this down real quick. So it is night one of us sleep training. So we put Ezra down at 7.45. Ezra, as you can hear, is crying. But that is not his like distress cry. That is literally a whine. He is tired. Um, there's sometimes where no matter if we're holding him or what, he cries like that because he's so tired. So I think that's all it is. So right now we are on the 10 minute wait mark. So we have seven minutes and 34 seconds left. He's like not saying anything. And they say if he goes 60 seconds of that, we need to start the clock all over again because you don't want to wake him up right when he's in the middle of sleeping. So we did three 15 minute checks, um, so I just did one, um, but he went to the restroom. Um, it was number two, so I took him out because um, I had to, I'm not gonna leave him in a dirty diaper. Changed him and basically restarted the process. So I nursed him, but he wasn't really eating. Um, I think he's full because we did start cereal um, as well. Um, so I put him back in and then I reset my clock for five minutes. So I'm basically gonna do it all over again. I don't really know how we're supposed to do this. I know we've touched him way too many times already because this is the leave method and you're supposed to walk in with your hands behind your back. I do have a nightlight on and I don't think you're supposed to do that either. I just feel bad leaving him in the dark. Like there's a lot of things I just, and I know I'm probably making this worse or not making it worse, but like 
you're just not supposed to do this, so I'm prolonging the process, basically. I thought he was asleep. I was going to give him any update. So I restarted the clock. So that at 9.02, I went and checked on him at 9.09. So we did five minutes. So we're on the 10 minute mark and we have two minutes and 39 seconds left. But he's not crying. So I have a stopwatch and if it gets to 60 seconds, I basically restart the 10 minutes all over again. I feel so bad doing this. Do you know how many times I almost went in there and just like stopped it and like we'll try again next week but I can't keep doing that and I know this is good for him. I know it doesn't seem like it right now and I'm not doing this so he sleeps like all night long. I'm not looking for a baby to sleep for 12 hours a night. I'm looking for a baby who sleeps like two to three hours because he wakes up every 45 minutes and I don't feel like that's normal and I don't want a second child who's three still in our bed like I just want to nip these bad habits that I created with Aria and the way the child sleeps I feel is on the parent not for everybody but for me and you know I was lazy with Aria when it came to like letting her sleep in bed with me because I worked full time and I needed that extra sleep because of my commute in the Bay Area like driving you know an hour and a half to two hours to get to work like there and then two hours back was tiring it's after working you know eight to ten hours a day so just allowed her to sleep with me so I can get that extra rest I'm pretty sure he's asleep guys it's been two minutes and he hasn't cried yet almost two minutes but yeah I just I feel like you know being a stay-at-home mom things are different and I can give him those better like sleep habits and this is also training for me it's not just training for my child like it's training me on how to provide a better sleep environment for him okay he's got another three minutes without crying so i'm pretty sure he's asleep but i want to take a shower first just to make sure he's really asleep so i can take that bear away because i don't want him to sleep with any toys or anything in his crib and then i guess we will just check in with you in the morning and i'll let you know how our night went good morning guys sorry for my throat it's 6 41 um i'm pretty sure i'm losing my voice oh he is but I cannot like pick him up until our wake up time, which is supposed to be eight o'clock. But I did put him to bed 15 minutes early. So I'm gonna go in there as soon as like I'm done with the coffee right now. I said eight o'clock, I meant seven o'clock. So he has four minutes. Hi, good morning. Hello. Hi, we did it. Good job sleeping. Good morning. Is it a rough night? Oh, is it a rough night? <laughs> yeah, I see a little smile. Oh, you're still hungry. Okay, guys, it is 7.42. Um, the hot coffee is kind of helping my throat, but he won't stay awake. So I don't know if I should have instead of taking him out 15 minutes early because it does give you a grace period of an hour. So like it says his wake up time seven, but no later than eight. Do I count this as his first nap? I'm so confused. And this is something that's not talked about. All right, guys, so it is 8.40. He has been in his bed for almost four minutes now, but he hasn't cried. That's all he's been doing. So since he's not crying, when it gets to five minutes, I don't go into his room to check on him. Um, but it does want me to record how long it takes him to fall asleep. You, you got Aria. Oh no. All right guys, so um, baby boy is asleep. He is perfectly fine. Um, he's been happy, she's fine. My voice is a little bit better. Oh, sorry, hold on. He took his first nap. What time did he go down? I like left. So I put him in the crib at 8.35. Did you say 11.30? No, I said his oh, first nap. nap. Oh, his first nap. First, first nap. nap was, uh, um, I put him. Yeah, so I put him in the crib at 8.35. He just, he did not even cry. He just sat in there. He was laughing. He was playing around. I had his little like sleep sheet next to him or his bear. Um, and Eric said he didn't cry because I had left to go to the, um, run an errand. And he said he fell asleep at 8. 55 so about 20 minutes it took him to fall asleep um and then he woke up just fine he actually woke up put himself back to sleep right woke up put himself back to sleep and woke up again didn't even cry yeah so we just went and grabbed him he was like in a really good mood right now you said 8 30 or 11 30 this time yeah it was 11 30 this time i come downstairs and he's asleep on eric's shoulder and i was like no so the whole point is even if it's because his nap was supposed to be at 12 20 oh he's 
kind of wakes. See, so yeah, he just kind of wakes up and rolls over, gets comfortable, goes back to sleep. His first nap was supposed to be twelve twenty, but he's not making his nap times. So even if they start to fall asleep early, it's gonna take time for him to adjust to his new nap times. Um, we're just supposed to put him in bed, and so Eric didn't realize that. So. We put him in bed right afterwards. He kind of opened his eyes, but then went right back to sleep. Yeah, he's like yawning and stuff. So we're gonna try to keep it like as close to the hour as possible. But during the day, he's doing really good with like being in his crib and not crying, which is key. So I'm hoping it stays that way tonight. I love you. You're okay. <laughs> Good morning, guys. Um, it is 6.23. I've been up since like five. <laughs> So last night was like really good. Ezra was able to get to sleep. I think it was like 28 minutes or something like that. The only thing I did is I did push his time back. So instead of 7.45, I made sure we were going to bed like right at 8 o'clock. Or no, sorry, it was 7.55. But I was trying to get as close to 8 o'clock as possible. So yeah, he did cry a little. Not nearly as bad as at the first night. Yeah, so he fell asleep at 8.23. And then at 10.26, I went upstairs to go to sleep. And he was still asleep. But I did grab him to do a dream feed. So this was an actual dream feed because sorry my throat is still I don't it's like my allergies I it, it's scratchy I don't know I'm sorry you guys but um at 10 26 it was an actual dream feed he was still asleep I gently pulled him out of his crib I nursed him for a little bit he never woke up and then I placed him back into the crib. So that was like an actual successful dream feed. That's what you're supposed to do. They're never supposed to wake up during that. So I did it for 10 minutes. He's back in bed by 1036. And we didn't check on him or he didn't start crying until 1156. So almost an hour and a half later. So I don't know if he would have woken up before then. But technically he was asleep from 823 to 1156. So that was a pretty long stretch. But like I said, I did have a dream feed in the middle. And so he could have woken up sooner if I didn't do that and then when we checked on him he like went right back to sleep we just said buddy you're okay um left the room and he was asleep until 2 18 so he's doing good as far as like long stretches go but right now is super hard because he wants to come out of like the room but I know as soon as I pull him out of the room he's going to nurse and he's gonna fall back to sleep because that's exactly what he did yesterday so I'm really trying to not pull him out of bed till seven o'clock we're six minutes in so I have four minutes before I go check on him because I just did his five minute check he's just crying it's just it, it's just so hard not to pull him out of the crib but we're trying to adjust his wake up time and it's like all the other ones are really good but now his morning one is at, uh, just, oh my god I'm like I can't even talk right now because he's just up there crying okay so you're on day three you're probably starting to see a little bit of progress by now hooray amazing news but here's one thing you need to know Sometimes babies seem to get a bit of a second win on day three. Hey, buddy. Hey, Hi. Hi. Good morning. Look outside. We have a big smile, huh? You ready to go eat? Yes, that's your dad. <laughs> yeah. All that crying, you're all smiles, huh? You all smiles? Yeah. Good morning. Okay, I'm go downstairs and eat. Yeah. All right, guys, it is 2.06, day three. This is nap number three for him, but the first one in his crib. Um, I gave him my t-shirt because it smells like me. I did this when I was gone on vacation, so I'm hoping it helps, and all he's done is like cuddle with it. He did just pop his pacifier out, so he's probably gonna cry. Um, yep. But I'm gonna try to give him a minute to see, oh no, if he's okay. 
Okay, so it is now 2.14 and he is asleep. I did just have to go in there. He was kind of awake and crying, but he moves the shirt over, um, not his face, but like his neck. So I just wanted to move it, but he's just holding on to it and I have the bear on top of it. But it's during the day and I'm literally just sitting here like editing um, and just watching him. So I'm okay with the shirt being in there. I know you're not supposed to do that, but I'm like literally just watching this the whole time. So if he does pull it over his face, I can run in there real quick and get it. Okay, I probably keep repeating myself because doing this like week long diary, I'm honestly forgetting like what I've told you, what I haven't told you. And I just wanna like let you guys know exactly like what my thought process is like in the moment while I'm going through this. And I wanna let you know it's been hard today. So day three has been extremely hard, especially because last night like we did so well and then this morning was hard like not being able to take him out of bed like I just wanted to cuddle with him in the middle of the night and just bring him to bed because I do I mean I never thought I was going to be a co-sleeping parent I always thought I was going to have my kids from the start like in their own rooms and Aria just was a bad sleeper like I just don't have the best sleeping children and they Aria did the same thing they like wake up every 45 minutes when I brought him home from the hospital he was doing really good but I kept him in a separate bed. It was like as soon as I brought him into our bed to start co-sleeping because I just got lazy about getting up with them and putting him back after breastfeeding and stuff. He, that's when I noticed he was waking up every 45 minutes and I think, and I did read about it, I think it has something to do with they can smell or he can smell my breast milk, therefore he just wakes up to nurse because he does, he latches onto me all night long and if like, he pulls away or it falls out of his mouth or whatever the case is he will kick and wake up again until i bring him next to me so i think him not being able to smell my breast milk um maybe allowing him to sleep longer stretches i don't know i'm not in his head i can't tell you for sure but that's just like my thought process and what i'm thinking but i think him being able to smell me like on my shirts and stuff still gives him comfort so that has helped i did read that that's okay like giving him a blankie um or you know like a lovey or something but the shirt thing was on there as well and like i said if you guys saw my vacation vlogs you know i left my shirt on a pillow or on instagram i forgot where i posted it i left my shirt on a pillow so he can smell me while i was gone because i mean i was gone for the weekend and i just wanted him to be able to connect with me all right guys, it's a couple hours later, so it is now 4.55. I don't know if you can see like what's on my phone. I always do that. I tap my phone thinking that's gonna focus the camera. Okay, so 4.56 now. He was asleep in less than a minute, um, and I changed my approach. Okay guys, so technically he has taken four naps today, so he took, well, I don't know if I can count the first one as a nap. I count the first one as he never fully woke up. So the, and there's nothing wrong with the Dream Labs app. I just think I am not strong enough for the leave method, which is very similar to the Ferber method. You know, when it comes to sleep training, don't feel like if you picked one method or, you know, you say you're gonna sleep train and it's just not working out, you know, by day three or four, don't feel like you have to continue that way. There are other methods out there and I know a lot of people associate sleep training to cry it out and it's not just that. There are so many other methods. Anytime you're teaching your child how to console themselves or how to fall asleep on their own or basically not need you and just be more independent when it comes to sleep, you're basically sleep training. It doesn't matter if you do the cry it out method, if you do the pat method, but yeah, don't ever feel like if you picked a method and it's not working for you, you have to stick to it. Or, you know, if the baby's just not responding and it's just hell for you guys that you have to continue, you can stop. I'm not gonna completely stop. I'm just moving forward because we weren't really doing the lead method all the way through anyways. <laughs> um, so I'm just going, like moving forward, gonna continue with this pat method. I wanna see how long he sleeps um it says to not let him sleep past 6 45 which i usually wake him up at 6 15 because that's dinner and he has been um eating solids now so that's when i give him his solids um and then 7 15 is when i start the bath i think i'm going to do 7 20 though because i did 7 15 yesterday and i was still five minutes early so i'm going to try 7 20 today to really get that 8 p.m bedtime and i'll let you guys know how that goes 
Good morning, guys. Day four. So it is 9.31. Ezra is taking his 9 a.m. nap. He actually got tired on his own. Um, so I came upstairs to nurse him. He started falling asleep while I was nursing. So I made sure I kind of woke him back up before putting him in the crib. He was crying a little bit, um, which is, I know it's sad, but it's a good thing because then he can just um, soul himself. And he was able to go out within a minute. I am letting him use a pacifier though. So technically that is like a, a crutch or a handicap or something he needs to fall asleep, but it's better than nursing onto me all day. Um, let me pull up the times real quick. I have it on my phone now because I kept losing that paper and it was hard to try to write things in the middle of the night. So this is, um, if you guys can like see if it'll focus. Okay, so if you guys can see, there is a ton of like times and information and stuff. So yesterday I talked to you guys about the morning, how it went um, and his naps and stuff. His last nap was 4.55 to 527. Um, he went to bed at 7.43. I don't know why I just can't get on that eight o'clock thing. Um, we have a pretty fast like night routine just because I have two kids. And so I try to just get them like in and out as fast as possible because I do one kid at a time. And I will have a night routine coming up soon. No, it's already up. My night routine is going up first. Um, so I'll link that if you guys just want to know what our night routine looks like. 7.43, he was in bed and literally like asleep. Um, I did feed him a bottle but he wasn't like really eating it. And I think it's because he ate so much. Like he did his cereal. We did two teaspoons this time instead of just the one. And then he nursed right afterwards too. Gave him a bath and then gave him a little bit of a bottle. And I think he had like an ounce if that. He just was full. So he was basically waking up every 45 minutes to hour. Like I said, every time his sleep machine would turn off. As far as pulling him out of the crib, I only did it twice versus the night before. I think I did what, three or four times to feed him. So that is a huge improvement, even though it seems like it was frequent. Um, and the fact that he's just falling asleep way faster, like within the minute of me putting him down, even right now, um, put him down and he was out. So yes, he's still using his pacifier, um, but it's, these are gradual baby steps that we're taking, but this is just like a huge improvement for the family. Good morning, guys. Uh, it's been a night. Hold on, let me turn this down real quick. My kids have like every electronic device on. I say kids, there's one child that can do all of that. But um, as you can tell, it was rough. So day four is supposed to get easier. I don't know. Okay, I do know. I know exactly what happened. I threw a wrench into our nighttime routine way too early. So our goal is to transition both kids to their bed on night three. She is fine. I'm just going to say that before I tell you what happened. Eric and I were downstairs. Um, Ezra was asleep. Like, he was sleeping good. All of a sudden, we just hear this huge, like, bang. And we knew exactly what it was. We ran upstairs. Aria was, like, on my side of the bed. She wasn't hurt. There was no marks on her, nothing. She did land where, like, my charger was right there. So we think... The most of the bang was my wall charger, like her hitting that and it falling. We do try to do like pillows and stuff. So what we're thinking is she tried to get out of bed, but got tangled into the blankets um, and just kind of like tripped and fell. I, it scared me. And I saw that also as an opportunity to not have her in my room anymore. So last night, Eric was not home and I'm not saying I don't understand like how much my husband helps me, but when it came to sleep training, having that second parent there helped so much because what I would do is I would get Ezra like ready for bed, right? He'd get his bath and stuff. And as soon as I pulled him out of the bath, Eric would bring Ari upstairs and give her her bath. And then I would be in the room with Ezra doing our regular nighttime routine, um, putting him to bed and stuff. So last night, not only was I by myself and I had to give both kids a bath and I thought I could do it the same way. So in the middle of like putting him to sleep, she was like ready to come out of the bath. And yeah, so it was just, it was kind of messy, even though, I mean, it was a well like running engine um it was just the fact that I, I forgot Ezra's song I put him in bed without doing his song because Ari wanted to come out so he was just like not having it I just forgot little things with our nighttime routine and so then I thought I could fix it by pulling him back out of the crib refeeding him like the rest of his bottle because there was like half ounce he didn't eat burp him do his song and then put him down but I just feel like because we started the night out so rough like 
he was up every 30 minutes last night i think his longest stretch of sleep and this is another thing all day yesterday we were so busy and stuff i didn't write down any time so i don't actually know know what time like i put him in his room what time i all i know is that 8 35 is when he first initially went to sleep so then i was like 30 minutes past the time like it was just a mess you guys but the point of this whole story was um i got tired of waking up every 30 minutes and checking on him and then coming back to bed and i just grabbed him finally at like 2 a.m and i put him in my bed which you were not supposed to do <laughs> so I'm hoping doing that didn't like restart it and technically I'm like restarting on day one today I'm hoping I could just forget about day four and day five is gonna be better um he did wake up at seven though and that's the other thing I try to keep him as far away from me as possible when he was in bed with me and I made sure I did not nurse him all night long he wanted to but once he realized I wasn't going to allow him to use me like a pacifier he like settled down um but he was like so like he needed his pacifier and this was the first night he was like that like other ones he would need it to fall asleep and he was fine last night was the first night if it fell out of his mouth he was waking up so i don't know guys i think we just had a rough night um a rough day four so today's day five and hopefully it goes better it's 9 15 so i'm gonna go upstairs <laughs> my life i'm gonna go upstairs and give him his first nap uh <laughs> and deal with my daughter hey guys so he is awake as you can tell um i think i totally messed it up last night so if you're doing this no matter how tired you are just stick through it and do not take them out of the room do not put them back into your bed do not i just I really don't want to start over again. I might. It sucks because we're so close. It's, I, I mean, there's no guarantee the first week it's going to be done, but if you can get through the first week, it makes it so much easier. Um, but last night we had troubles with him, and then today he went down at 8, 8.06. He woke up again at 8.45, and then at 9.02, then at 9.12, and now at 9.25. So, um... I don't know if he was overtired because his last nap was from 3 to 3.55 and he stayed awake until 8.05. He dozed off for like two minutes at 5 o'clock so I think he was overtired and now we're paying for it. So I just feel like I, don't, I just really need to get his nap set but he doesn't sleep for a long period of time for his nap so I don't know <laughs> what to do. Um, he was just sitting in there just crying like just like screaming and I couldn't handle it. Um, and Arya's trying to sleep too, so I'm probably just going to take him downstairs with me because um, he is a wide awake, nurse him, and then I'm going to just keep trying to put him in his room tonight and not put him back into my room, um, and hopefully tomorrow we can get those like naps under control um, because we only have like two days left and I just need to get this like routine down. Hey guys, so it is day six and I'm feeling pretty defeated right now. Um, I honestly was just going to scrap this video and not put it out because obviously it wasn't successful and my child is not sleep trained. Um, I don't even know at this point, like I hope there's footage that helps you guys or gets you through this, but this is reality. I was going to also get all dressed up, but these bags are real. I am extremely exhausted. I know Eric is exhausted. Poor thing has to like work too. Um, I don't get to take naps during the day. Aria no longer naps, so there is like no sleep for us except for at night. Guys, I don't even know what I'm saying anymore. Whew. Okay, so yeah, just like I said, I'm just feeling like really, really defeated. Um, Eric and I discussed and we talked about it and you know although this did help us out a ton there was a lot I did wrong the app I was using or it's not really an app I just saved it to my home screen so it's more like an app but the website or whatever so the dream labs they have such great information on here um, I'm not blaming them at all I understood they were in beta form still um, so I know by the time this video goes out they would have released an actual copy and like that's gotten rid of all the bugs 
rugs and stuff one of the things was I decided to switch halfway um, I think I was calling it the leave method it's actually called the visit method which is where you leave the room and then you wait your intervals you go on there you don't touch your child you just say mommy's here in less than 30 seconds and then you leave your room again it is the fastest because it creates the least amount of irritation to your child when you're touching your child and not picking your child up or you pick your child up for a second and put your child back down they can become agitated um, because especially like for me like co-sleep mirrors and stuff we're used to holding your baby or laying next to your baby so when you pick them up and then you don't do what you normally do to put them to sleep they're confused and they're agitated by that fact so i think we're going to revisit the visit method again i tried to do the touch method which is recommended for babies under six months but um there was no selection for me to change my method um, on here and I knew that was a thing it was missing so I checked again today and it's back on here so it says um, method selection at the top okay so here is like the menu bar so all of this was missing um, all it said was uh, where to start the sleep stillers and the method selection was totally missing and they've added the um, other ones down here as well so the daily goals and stuff so now that I have this back on I was able to change my methods again and rewatch the other videos to see what's gonna best fit us so when I decided to switch I didn't have that guide so I tried to do my own research online and I had the method totally wrong and I think that's where I messed up so the um, touch method is the same thing you work in intervals as well because the whole point of this is try to get your child to self-soothe and what I was doing was calming him with touch until he fell asleep and then I would leave so he actually wasn't learning anything um, so I totally did that wrong which is probably why he kept waking up frequently because then we were going so strong on the touch method but the wrong way so if I could give you any advice if you're going to do this it would definitely be to do as much research as possible the Dream Labs I do like and I'm going to stick with it um, because it gives me videos and I'm a very visual person and so it just kind of talks you through the day. It does the um, hard work of mapping out what your schedule during the day should look like based off of what time your child goes to bed. It does adjust the schedules for you which is something I did not know in the beginning of this and I may have talked about it but like if I woke him up, one day he woke up at 6.45, my entire day was adjusted and his nighttime was moved up. One day he went to um, bed later and so his wake up time was later. So depending on what your patterns are, it does adjust your daily schedules for you as well. Um, I will be doing like how to introduce solids. I will also be doing videos on like what um, a routine looks like for us. So like a full 24 hour routine um, and obviously an updated sleep training routine as well or sleep training with me video. So if you're interested in that, make sure to hit that subscribe button along with the notification bell. Sorry this video wasn't successful, but please let me know in the comments below if it did help you out at all or if you gained any insight or information or the confidence to do it yourself trying to do it with me. So yeah, that is all guys. As always, we love you and I'll see you in the next one.